Good morning, y'all. Machiavelli Mills TV. Y'all hit the like button, hit the, hit the subscribe button. I'm sorry, I'm stuttering and all that first. Um, but anyway, on ESPN First Take the other day, Stephen A. Smith calls the timing of J.J. Reddick and LeBron James starting their podcast one of the most egregious things we have seen a basketball player do to a coach, right? And he says it's because, it's because it happened during the basketball season and it was during the time that Darvin Ham was Darvin Ham was on a hot seat. So them starting that podcast about X's and O's is one of the most egregious things we've seen a player do to a coach, right? I want to say this. First of all, if talking X's and O's is a threat to a coach's job, he shouldn't be a coach in the first place. I repeat, if talking basketball X's and O's is a threat to a coach's job, that man shouldn't be a coach in the first place. I'm going to say this, man. Like, you, you're you hard-pressed to find any Lakers fan, a real Lakers fan, who is a fan of Darvin Ham's coaching ability. I can't find many who are a fan of his coaching ability. Any Lakers fans, for real, that are a fan of Darvin Ham's coaching ability. Darvin Ham's rotations were terrible. His coaching decisions and substitutions were awful. And that's why he doesn't have a job now. Darvin Ham would do things like, you know, if the team needs obvious, they need to get stops and they need defenders on the floor. Darvin Ham would take two defenders out for two shooters. And everybody looking like, what is he doing? What is going on? He would do stuff like that often, consistently, to the point where people be like, yo, what is going on? Why is AD sitting on the bench like six minutes into the fourth quarter? What are we doing? We need rebounds. We need, we need rim protection. Why is he still buried on the bench? He would do things like that, right? So Darvin Ham was not the best coach for the Lakers situation. Second of all, y'all know what's crazy about this? The crazy thing about this is D'Angelo Russell started a podcast in the middle of the season as well. He did. And he directly, directly spoke about coaching flaws on the very first episode of his podcast. And guess who joined him on the very first episode of that podcast where they talked about coaching flaws? Anthony Marshawn Davis Jr., my Chicago brother. For sure, right? A.D., one of the top players in the league who had a great season this year, a resurgent season, right? And with all that happened, him bringing on D'Angelo Russell starting a podcast and the first episode is about coaching flaws and him bringing Anthony Davis in on a podcast. Why Stephen A. Smith ain't bring up Anthony Davis' name? Why? Why didn't he talk about Anthony Davis joining in on a conversation about cloak coaching flaws that his teammate D'Angelo Russell was having? Why didn't he call out D'Angelo Russell for starting a basketball podcast podcast in the middle of the season where he's discussing coaching flaws? Specifically, something LeBron James has not done on his show, discussing coaching flaws. His first episodes and stuff was not about coaching flaws. D'Angelo Russell's name, D'Angelo Russell, D'Angelo Russell's podcast was. But why didn't Stephen A. Smith call out D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Davis? Because it's not sexy and it doesn't create the same clicks that mentioning, that mentioning LeBron James' name does. And that's a fact, right? Um, Stephen A. likes to be villain amongst today's NBA superstars because it makes him appear unbiased. It makes him appear edgy and it creates views. But the thing about this is Stephen A. loses credibility when he makes certain statements like this. Not because it's LeBron James he's discussing, but because other people on LeBron's team are not held accountable when they are when they have done things that are far more damaging to Darvin Ham and his coaching coaching job than LeBron James has ever done. OK, they aren't held to the same standard. They aren't held accountable. Nothing. Anthony Davis get on the podcast with Darvin Ham talking about coaching flaws and AD's name not mentioned about his that being egregious. D'Angelo Russell's name ain't, ain't mentioned being, being egregious. And I know some of y'all going to say, well, D'Angelo Russell is not a superstar player. Anthony Davis for sure is. He for sure is. And many people feel like he's the best player on the Lakers team now, which he is. Which he is. Why isn't he held to that same standard? Why isn't he ridiculed for coming on a podcast with your teammate discussing coaching flaws? When your coach has been criticized all season for coaching flaws, substitution, uh, terrible substitution methods, terrible rotations, etc. Hmm. I wonder why, right? Um, LeBron and JJ Redick. No, this is, I'm going to get back to Stephen A. Smith. 
Stephen A often forms narratives to antagonize LeBron because it's sexy to do that. What do I mean by that? Again, it draws clicks, right? It draws in viewers and then it gets head nods from millions of people who don't like LeBron. Seriously. Like it gets head nods. Yes, mm-hmm, 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 from people that don't like LeBron James when he forms narratives to antagonize LeBron. And it makes his show appear fair when it's not. Because if it was fair, if ESPN first take and Stephen A. Smith's commentary was fair, he would also criticize Anthony Davis for getting on a podcast with his teammate who started a podcast first. It, it, I'm trying to think, when, when the podcast on. No, yeah. You would also criticize... Um, D'Angelo Russell and and Anthony Davis for getting on his podcast talking about coaching flaws when your coach has been scrutinized to a high degree about coaching flaws. But he didn't talk about Anthony Davis and D'Angelo Russell. No. He said, I'm a single out LeBron James of all people. And we know why that is. Okay. Um, I'm never going to act like Stephen A. Smith is not a, a, a great journalist. Like he doesn't, he hasn't done great journalistic work. Um, he's a beat writer. Um, I mean, he carries ESPN on his back, right? With the content that he makes, uh, with providing commentary on other different shows. And he provides commentary on basketball, football, boxing. You hear him talk about some baseball. You know, he makes appearances on other people's shows to help drive in ratings. And so he's a hardworking man all the way through and through. And he is a, uh, a guy who has helped um, push sports debate shows forward, right? Forward for years, but he just does a lot of things. It's like, bro, what? It, like, what? It, what is going on? The real problem is Stephen A. Smith is salty because he does not have access to LeBron James in the same way he has access to Michael Jordan, Carmelo Anthony, and the way he had access to the late great Kobe Bryant. Stephen A. loves like when Jerry West passed away. And he gets on, uh, and rest in peace to the legend, the icon, the NBA logo, Jerry West. Jerry West passes away. Stephen A. Smith it goes on TV to read uh, a tweet, I mean, a message, a text from Michael Jordan, right? And Stephen A. loved being able to do that. He loves being able to read texts from Carmelo Anthony and say, I got a text from Carmelo Anthony. I got a text from Kobe Bryant. I got a call from Kobe Bryant. I got a call from Michael Jordan. I got a text from Michael Jordan. He loves to be able to say that because it gives him a certain level of um, accessibility. It gives him a certain level of credibility that he feel like other people don't have with the legends of this game because he knows a lot of them and he's very friendly with a lot of them and he got their numbers and all of that, right? And, you know, it, he don't, he doesn't have that same access to LeBron James. LeBron James won't give it to him. He won't. He can talk to Rich Paul, but he can't talk to LeBron James directly. He don't got LeBron number directly. LeBron ain't texting him and talking to him and giving him exclusives and things like that. And I do believe that Stephen A. does feel a way about those things at times, even though he says he doesn't. I do believe that he does want access to certain players the same way he had access to Michael Jordan Carmelo Anthony and Kobe Bryant because they would often call and text him and tell him to say all type of stuff on, on his shows. They do. They did. Right. So Carmelo would call him about things that he said and how he needs to fix certain stuff he said and put respect on his name when he was talking about when Carmelo wasn't in the league or Carmelo was in danger of being out of the league during the Houston Rockets stand and all of that. Like and during the OKC uh, year. Carmelo was reaching out to him and, Car and, and and checking him about certain things. And, you know, Stephen A would always say, hey, I was able to talk to this person and that person. And I was able to talk to Carmelo. Carmelo called me. He called me. And he can't do that with LeBron. But let's push forward, right? LeBron James and J.J. Reddick started this podcast because shows like ESPN First Take. And I, I enjoy these shows. But let's be for real. I have to be honest about it. Shows like ESPN First Take and FS1 Undisputed are often filled with discussions about hypotheticals and dramatic discussions about whose legacy takes a hit if they lose this game or lose that game, if they get swept or not, whose legacy will take a hit if they lose this MVP, MVP battle, whose legacy will take a hit if they're eliminated, eliminated in the first round, etc. right? J.J. Reddick challenged that and said, man, 
listen, I'm tired of these hypotheticals and these discussions about whose legacy takes a hit. He said most fans don't want to hear basketball X's and O's, though. So I understand most fans want to hear hypotheticals and, you know, the dramatic conversations about legacy, whose legacy is more impactful, etc. It's more sexy to talk about those things. So J.J. Redick challenged the fans and he brought in a pantheon great player who's currently playing like LeBron James, a Mount, a Mount Rushmore talent, to discuss basketball plays, schematics, and discuss why some plays are more effective than others and why some players are so effective in certain situations, right? They talk about how certain plays helped uh, LeBron and how certain plays helped J.J. Redick at different points of their career, etc., you know what I mean? And that's why the podcast was started. Not to antagonize uh, Darvin Ham, to put his job in jeopardy, to clown him out. It was started after J.J. Reddick had that conversation on air with Stephen A. Smith about, yo, I'm tired of these hypotheticals. And Shannon, Shannon Sharp was like, yo, this is TV. This is what we do. He like, yo, we need to talk about some other things. And like, cause most, most, But he said, I understand. J.J. said, I understand. Most basketball fans only want to talk about these hypotheticals. And, and legacy hits, they don't want to talk about back basketball X's and O's and schematics, which are also very important to the game and it needs to be discussed or whatever. And so that's why he started the podcast with LeBron James, with LeBron James. not to put Darvin Ham's job in jeopardy, because quite frankly, the job was already in jeopardy for real, especially when you saw certain things take place on the court. And then when you look uh, in the huddle and you get like, when they, when you're hearing the sound and stuff, right, and you're hearing LeBron James at times correcting certain things and telling players where to go on the court or whatever, you know what I mean? And so people already like, why is LeBron making more sense than Darvin Ham? And why is Darvin Ham not taking, why is these uh, certain rotations being made? And why are these decisions being made? Why is he taking, taking out the defenders when we need stops? Why is AD sitting on the bench six minutes, seven minutes into the fourth quarter? Why is he doing that? Like, you know, uh, why is um, D'Angelo Russell sitting on the bench seven, eight minutes into the fourth quarter when, yeah, he can be streaky, but we need his scoring at times because, A, he's a key pivotal player and he could get hot to help stop the bleeding at times. You know what I mean? So the fans, Lakers upper management, uh, they saw these things themselves. They didn't need LeBron James to get on there and, and try to talk about schematics in order to highlight Devin, Darvin Ham's inabilities. And LeBron wasn't even doing that. If anything, the person talking about coaching flaws was D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Davis on D'Angelo Russell's podcast, man. But I say this to say, man, ESPN, when LeBron James retire, they going to lose their mind trying to figure out what they going to talk about in basketball, Right. They still like, like they're going to lose their mind trying to figure out how to make these conversations more sexy, more uh, dramatic and more clicks. Maybe they'll use like, oh, is Jokic better than LeBron? And maybe those are conversations that will come next. You know, I don't know. Is Anthony Edwards threatening LeBron's legacy? But who knows? Stephen A. Smith needs to chill.